This is Sunday School Lesson for November the 11th, 2018. Um, I'm reading from the Gospel Union Press version. I might do another version this week. If I do, check the description or check my channel. Um, I might do it this week or I might do the other version next week. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to stick to the Gospel Union Press for this week for sure and we'll see about next week so this is for november the 11th 2018 and the title of this lesson is safety in the ark um, the scripture text will be from genesis chapter 7 verses 1 through 10. related scriptures is psalms 91 1 through 10 matthew chapter 7 24 through 27 luke chapter 13 23 through 30 and second peter chapter 2 4 through 9. the story of noah's life involves not one but two great and tragic floods the world in noah's day was flooded with evil the number of those who remember the god of creation perfection and love had dwindled to one. Of God's people, only Noah was left. God's response to the severe situation was, a, was a 120 year long last chance during which he had Noah build a graphic illustration of the message of his life. Nothing like a huge boat on dry land to make a point. For Noah, obedience meant a long-term commitment to a project. Many of us have trouble sticking to any project, whether or not it's directed by God. It is interesting that the length of Noah's obedience was greater than the lifespan of people today. The only comparable long-term project, project is our very lives. But perhaps this is one great challenge Noah's life gives us to live in acceptance of God's grace an entire lifetime of, ob of obedience and gratitude. Strengths and accomplishments. Only follower of God left in this generation. That's Noah's strength. He was the only follower, follower of God left in his generation. Second father of the human race, man of patience, consistency and obedience, first major shipbuilder, his weaknesses and mistakes. He got drunk and embarrassed himself in front of his sons. Let's get on with the scripture text, starting with verse one. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the boat with all your family, for among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice, and take one pair of each of the others. Also take seven pairs of every kind of bird. There must be a male and a female in each pair to ensure that all life will survive on the earth after the flood. Seven days from now, I will make the rains pour down on the earth, and it will rain for forty days and forty nights, until I have wiped from the earth all the living things I have created. Reading commentary from verse 1. Pairs of every animal joined Noah in the boat. Seven pairs were taken of those animals used for sacrifice. Scholars have estimated that almost 45,000 animals could have fit into that boat. As we glean from Genesis 6-3, it had been 120 years since Noah started building the ark. Now it was ready. God told Noah and his family to go into the ark and with them came seven of each of the clean animals and birds for sacrifice. Explain, <clears throat> excuse me, the other animals were to be in pairs, male and female for procreation. God made the devastating declaration that after exactly one week, 
it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights. God stated that he would wipe out everything that he had created. Put yourself in Noah's shoes. Would you have obeyed God if he commanded you to do what he told Noah? But here we see Noah obeying God, even though he did not quite understand it at all. Remember that Noah had never seen rain before, let alone a flood. We read that he obeyed God to the very last letter. Scripture tells us that Noah was 600 years old when the flood came upon the earth. He may have felt that everything was stacked against him, but he chose to obey God. Continuing with verses 5 through 10. So Noah did everything as the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. He went on board the boat to escape the flood, he and his wife, and his sons and their wives. With them were all the various kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice, and those that were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. They entered the boat in pairs, male and female, just as God had commanded Noah. After seven days, the waters of the flood came and covered the earth. If the question arises, point out that there is no contradiction in the fact that the animals are described as entering two by two in Genesis 7, 9 and by sevens in verses two through three. The latter number refers specifically to the clean animals. What is important to note in this section is that Noah obeyed God to the very last letter and safely was provide and safety was provided for him and his family. We learned that with obedience to God alone comes safety and protection, even when we do not have all the details. In verse 4, we read that God had told Noah that after he had come into the safety of the ark with his family, he would flood the earth after seven days. Now we read that the flood came just as God had promised Noah. Here is something to think about. What would have happened if Noah had ignored God's instructions and warnings? Safety in this world comes through obeying God alone. The boarding of the ark, Noah is mentioned first as the obvious head of this family and the one to whom God had continually given instructions about this event. The mention of everyone else in a methodical format indicates that all preparations had now been completed. So one by one, the family members entered the ark. There is a fourfold division mentioned here clean animals, unclean animals, fowls, and creeping things. The term beast probably refers to all large quadruped animals, some of which are considered clean and some unclean. Smaller quadrupeds are not specified, with some probably being in each category. The word translated fowls refers to everything with feathers. The word translated creepeth refers to everything that glides, crawls, or takes short steps. Once again, we are given the detail that the animals enter in pairs, male and female. Noah stuck to the project for over 100 years and accomplished God's will in doing so. Here was a man who stood alone in his generation as a God-fearer and who was determined to do nothing but what God wanted. He stands, therefore, as a prime example for us today. We, too, now live in a world that has departed far from God's ways. Although there are still millions of believers scattered around the world, we live in societies that are becoming increasingly godless and under leaders who ignore or actively oppose the holy standards once adhered to. We must, therefore, determine that we will stand firm in our culture. As Paul described to Timothy, the last days are going to become more and more wicked. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 through 7. Key points. 
One, God always provides for those who will obey him. Two, even as we see God's love and his provision, we recognize his holiness and his judgment. Three, the obedient find peace and safety in God's care. Four, obedience to God displays our faith to the world. Five, no one can ever claim to be too old to do God's work. Six, when God gives us a plan, we must follow through. Seven, in grace and in judgment, believers can count on God to keep his word. That concludes the Sunday School lesson for November the 11th, 2018, Gospel Union Press version. If this has helped you in any type of way, please feel free to comment, thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Have a good one.